This is the difference between those people who live a life as a miser, never enjoying, and those people that break through and have a life of wealth that actually engage more people, and it's called They Understand Productive Expenses. If you find yourself in survival mode where you're like, oh, I just gotta make it through, that's a real selfish place to be. Or if you feel yourself in a pity party for yourself or you're feeling down and out, what you do is you call up someone that you know that cares about you and that you care about, and rather than telling them your sob story, ask about their life. What are you excited about? What's your biggest challenge right now? What do you hope to accomplish in the next month? And as soon as you find something you can help them with, dive in for a minute, and guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna say thanks, they're gonna appreciate you, and it's gonna be hard to feel sorry for yourself in that moment. And that's how you get out of scarcity, is through service and value creation. And not being so committed to your bad story, but creating a story that's right for your life. Because things are gonna happen, it's gonna be your reaction and how, what you do about that. Because I made Killing Sacred Cows a book and a New York Times bestseller from the worst financial decisions of my life, that I was more committed to what's right than who's right, and I said, I'm willing to tell the story. I'm willing to open up and be a little bit transparent, be authentic about it, and if people wanna attack me about it, I'll let that happen because that's about them, it's not about me. What their opinion is, is none of my business. Does that make sense? So, choose abundance. Produce more than you consume. That's the thing. Look in your life and say, is there any area of matter of integrity? What can you do to improve your finances right now? I'll give you a strategy. Categorize your life into three categories of expenses. So you have expenses right now. Those expenses, are there are some destructive expenses. Destructive expenses might be financing alcohol. That, you know, if you can't pay cash for it and you amortize that over 30 years, right, Dr. Scott? I mean, that's kind of a bad deal. Not that he, I'm not saying, he gave me the idea to talk about. You know, you know all that beer that you drank back in the day and now, you're just, no, I'm just kidding. So, so, destructive expenses are like video games for my son. He becomes a different child if he plays video games with his auditory issues and he disengages it. He limits his imagination. He gets out of alignment much quicker. So we had to remove that from his life, right? What are your destructive expenses? Eliminate your destructive expenses. Now, there's consumptive expenses. Consumptive expenses are those things that are maybe are enjoyable in life, things that you want to do, but they don't lead to the production on the bottom line. Do your best to pay cash for those things. Don't borrow to consume. If you're gonna borrow, make sure it's to produce, right? You're borrowing to get an education so you can produce more. You're borrowing to finance a loan for a business so you can produce more. That's different. When I'm talking about, hey, let's go to Hawaii. Oh yeah, we just can put that on the student loan or on the credit card. Don't borrow to consume. Now, here's a third piece, and this is more important when you graduate, but productive expenses. This is the difference between those people who live a life as a miser, never enjoying, and those people that break through and have a life of wealth that actually engage more people, and it's called They Understand Productive Expenses. So here's a problem in the chiropractic community. People hire cheaply. They say, how can I get the cheapest person to do this job? And the problem is, they might not have the skill, they might not fit the culture, and ultimately, it may tax you because now you have to do a bunch of their job because they're not an A-teamer. The reason why Apple succeeded was first of all their vision, but the second was they hired A-teamers. And an A-teamer will outproduce a B-teamer by a thousand percent in some cases. IBM says 5,200 percent as a matter of fact. So you look for the best and be willing to pay for it because it's going to produce 10 times more than it costs you. Most people are just minimizing expenses, but write this down. You don't shrink your way to wealth. No one shrinks their way to greatness. You be mindful of your money, but when something's going to add more to your bottom line, when something's going to bring money into your pocket, be willing to spend that money there. Don't throw it to a mutual fund and a retirement plan until you funded your business, right? So when you categorize destructive, consumptive, and productive, it can help you rethink expenses and then move to producing more, not just cutting out, okay? So I'll say it this way. You've ever, everyone's started to live within your means, right? That's good advice. The only problem is, if the only way you live within your means is by cutting expenses, you'll never get wealthy, even if you have a lot of money. I mean, there was a lady that died in Harlem because she didn't turn on her heater one winter when it was extraordinarily cold. They found $5 million of bearer bonds in her apartment. That's called cutting expenses to stupidity, right? Um, and it's a serious situation. I probably shouldn't be so tongue-in-cheek about it, but the bottom line is, that happens all the time, not to that extreme. So, be a producer. What's your producer paradigm? 
Treat yourself as the greatest asset. Focus on investing in yourself now and into the future. Have it as a way of life and a way of being. Continue on a daily basis to invest in your sole purpose. Discover, expand, accelerate your sole purpose. Immerse yourself in it. It's not a one-time thing. It's a continual discovery as you move forward.